afternoon, Average Engineers. Today I'm going to talk about a fairly controversial subject, even though I don't know why it's controversial, but it is a reviewing the data orchestration landscape. Honestly, this one is always gets people upset just because people have their favorite tools, whether it's Airflow or something else, and they just get all worked up about it. But honestly, it's just there's a lot of orchestration tools out there on the market and I just wanted to kind of give a high level overview of what the options are because there's a lot of them and then what your real options are meaning this is what you should actually choose between this is what you should choose when you're looking for an air orchestration tool just because there's a ton of options not all of them are for everyone a lot of them are kind of junk and you've got kind of a couple that are really good and i just kind of wanted to go into that today okay if we really want to just start at the beginning and say what are our reasonable options if we just we're looking for a new orchestration tool what should we even look at? What are our options, good or bad? Just like, what's the big list? I kind of put some basically what I think are your overall options across the landscape. Mostly open source, but there is some closed source stuff in here. We'll kind of look at that a little bit later. But as you can see here, I've got a list. And I think this is really your serious options if you're looking at, hey, we're on a data platform, I want an orchestration tool, I'm looking for a new one, what are even my options? I think this pretty much sums it up. Sure, there may be a few weirdos hanging around the edges, but for the most part, these are the major ones. You've got Prefect, Dagster, Airflow, Orchestra, Mage, Step Function, Luigi, Kestra, Metaphor, Flight. You know, these are some very high level options when it comes to the entire data orchestration landscape. Now, I do want to talk about this for a second because there are kind of three different types of tools. If you look at this big list and say, how do we even start breaking them up? Where do I start from here? I would say there's kind of three high level ways you could break all these tools up. That is closed source. So 100% SaaS solutions that are closed source. I mean, they're not open sourced at all. Of course, you have the total opposite end spectrum from that, which is like Apache Airflow, totally open source. And then, of course, you kind of have these, a lot of tools actually in the middle. They're kind of semi-open source, semi-not. They basically, they offer a paid managed version. Also offer, offer it as an open source version, which means there is always some back and forth about, you know, which features get what first. Do they release all the best features to the open source? Do they keep some of them behind a the paywall? Clearly, most companies do. That's just the reality of it. So when you look at all these options, you kind of probably should break them up into these three different categories, at least helps you sort of look at them from that light. Open source, closed source, and somewhere in between. I'll kind of show you a picture of that here. So closed source, we pretty much have AWS step functions that's totally closed 100%. For on the other side, totally open source, you have Apache Airflow, Metaflow, Luigi, and Argo. And then you have like this open closed set where that's where most of the new tooling coming out is yeah they have an open source option but you're not always sure how much of the features are open source how much is closed they offer managed page version it's kind of like this in-between world and that's where actually most of the tools fall so you kind of ask yourself at a top level how should we compare orchestration tools we have to have some way of honing down this list where should i even start this is kind of where I start. If I'm gonna pick a new tool, I'm starting out and I just wanna cross them off the list this isn't gonna work for me. Honestly, I think you should cross off the closed source tools, just cross them off the list. You want at least partial open source for obvious reasons. And then also, you know, you, you look at the community, right? You wanna say, how big is the community? Is it used or not? widely across because you know you'll run into problems you you need to have a tool that has some sort of large community behind it at least a little bit otherwise you're kind of flying by yourself and we want full feature tools not not those tools operating on the fringe right we want tools and orchestration tools that kind of have a lot of integrations they you know kind of work across a large variety of platforms you don't want something that's super narrow in its use case, if that makes sense. So I went ahead and I crossed a few off the list. I crossed off AWS Stack Functions because they're totally closed. I crossed off Argo. We can talk about that, but that is basically Kubernetes only, specifically for Kubernetes workflows. So sure, if you're a Kubernetes shop, that might work for you, but for most people, it's not going to work. I crossed off Luigi simply because it's just not use that often it doesn't have a big community behind it anymore it used to be popular years ago not anymore there's just not that much there i crossed off metaflow and orchestra as well orchestra just because they're it's they're very weird when it comes to open closed source there's a lot of i don't know what's going on there it just seems a little bit strange if you go look at their github and kind of like look at okay what's open source versus closed they just don't have a lot of documentation going on there it's a little a gray area so you just close them off the list and i also crossed off metaflow simply because it's more data science and ml focused it's not really you know it's kind of got a narrow use case in there again if that's what you need fine but it's really not a broad 
broad tool. It's specific for machine learning and data science workflows. And that gives us a start, right? We crossed off a bunch of the lists, so you know it kind of hacks it down a little bit for us. And just because I can, I went ahead and I made a little chart of what it looks like as far as GitHub stars and open issues on GitHub for each of these Tulane pieces that are left over and that we looked at here. Honestly, GitHub stars can be a little weird. I know people complain that companies buy stars and things like that, and probably that some of that's true. But generally, I'm saying if we look at stars combined with open issues, we should get an idea of how big the community is, how much it's used, how much activity is going on with that tool. Again, if there's not a lot of open issues, if there's hardly anything open, that probably means that there's not a big community. There's not a lot of people using it, if that makes sense. you know. Sure, Tulane gets becomes more stable over time, but again, yeah, we can use these two together, the stars and the open issues to say, hey, how active is this tool? And that just gives us another way to look at it, say, hey, is there one of these tools that's a little bit funky? There's not much going on there. And I would say looking at this, we could probably cross a couple more off the list. When it comes to flight, if you look at flight, it's just there's not a lot of stars, not a lot of open issues comparatively to everybody else. I think we should go ahead and cross that off. We just want, remember, we want a, a tool that has a large community behind it. Kestra, strangely, if you look at right next to it, has a ton of stars, like in more than flight, but again, there's hardly any open issues, which kind of is a red flag to me, like what's going on there? Why would there be so many stars? But then hardly any open issues. That just doesn't make sense to me. You should have some open issues if you have a lot of stars. We're gonna cross that one off the list. Remember some of these we already crossed the list, off the list like Metaflow, Luigi, Argo, etc. So we could cross the rest of them off the list here that we just talked about. That kind of brings us down to the mighty four. So if we've crossed off some closed source stuff, crossed off some other stuff that's kind of like Argo that was Kubernetes based and Metaflow that was data science based and Luigi that just doesn't have a big community. Of course we crossed off a couple more just based on the game. GitHub stars and open issues that kind of leaves us with four major options in the data orchestration landscape. Those being Airflow, Prefect, Mage, Mage and Dagster. And honestly, I don't think that should surprise anyone. That should be kind of very straightforward. If you're around the data world at all, you will have heard of these four tools probably, which that's a good sign because that means there's people out there using them in the wild and they're probably decent tools if a lot of people are using them. So, you know, these are really your major four options when it comes to data orchestration tooling. If you think about it, what it really comes down to is we have Apache Airflow versus everything else. I mean, if we're being honest, that's the truth. Apache Airflow is the 500 pound grill in the room, ton of usage, and you have Dagster, Prefect, and Mage kind of biting at the heels, looking to pick up and improve on things that Airflow is not the best at, and they're trying to pick up users and people to use them. And I think probably any one of those tools is fine. Honestly, I would say generally speaking, I'm not going to get into how each one of these tools work, but at a high level, if you're talking about these big four, what are the major differences between them? You know, what mostly what are these other tools improved on on top of Airflow or where do they kind of focus? I would say I see kind of two high level things happening when I look at these major tools. Basically, two of the, some of those tools are DAG based approach. They're more DAG based like Airflow. They're very specific to data orchestration maybe not so much with the data processing. So they're very DAG based. Foes directed acrylic graph, so building complex pipelines that can do that well. Then you have some of these other new tooling that comes out that are kind of like Mage and Prefect. They're sort of what I would call like code centric based approaches. Yes, they're orchestration tools that you can build complex pipelines, but the integration between basically the pipeline and the code that actually works on the data is very very tight. It's a very code centric approach to data orchestration. If you had to ask me, this is kind of how I'd group them. I'd put Airflow and Dagster in like the DAG based approach. I would put Mage and Prefect kind of over in that other bucket of like code centric based toolings more so than Airflow and Dagster. I think what it comes down to is you pretty much have four major options. You got Airflow, Prefect, and Dagster, and Mage. I think any one of those tools is fine. They all have their pros and cons. They all, you know, probably have use cases that fit better than other use cases. Obviously, Airflow is a big 500 pound gorilla in the room. If you're not happy with Airflow for whatever reason, definitely check out Prefect, Dagster, Mage. Any one of those are pretty similar. In general, they're more code centric, but I think you know when it comes down to orchestration tools, just pick something that has a big community behind it, a lot of people using it. You'll be able to find documentation, troubleshooting tips, and then of course, you know, you want them to have a lot of integrations. So if you're Working with EC2 or AWS or GCP or Snowflake or Databricks or whoever that, you know, these tools are widely used to have good integration with those other SaaS tools, you can build complex and wide-ranging pipelines.